is one of my good friends from like the last, I don't know, seven or eight years. I met him like one, he was one of my first friends that I met when I joined Nomadic Matt and this crazy online entrepreneurship endeavor. And he is one of the most inspiring, the most energetic, the most prolific people in the online world. And he also like just is here to inspire people to create the life that they love and to make sure that they are doing what they are passionate about and able to just like live a lifestyle that is free of so many other things. I invited him this week because he has a really cool project going on. It's called the Paradise Pack and he is all about teaching people how to create the life that he's sort of created for himself. And he's like giving us all these shortcuts. So today he's going to sort of explain it. And at the end, he'll go over what the Paradise Pack is. I love the Paradise Pack. I've been a part of it for many years um, through Nomadic Matt. And so I'll share a little bit about that at the end too, but I'm going to pass it over to Travis now. All Uh, right. What's up guys? Thank you, Erica. Um, I think she's underselling my enthusiasm because I was yelling into the mic when it was just her and I. She was like, okay, calm down. Um, uh, So I'm ready to rock and roll, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I see people coming all the way from, we got London in the house with Alex and Samia. We got South Africa here, Uh, Manchester, New Hampshire. I've spent a lot of time in Manchester, New Hampshire. So yeah, let us know where you're coming from if you you haven't already put that in. Super excited to be here with you all. And I'm just going to tell you a little behind the uh, scenes thing here. Erica laid a bit of a challenge down. She didn't know she was laying it down. I said, hey, I can do a PowerPoint or um, I can I can use a whiteboard. I used to be a teacher. I'll tell you a little bit about that. And she was like, well, uh, you know, most people do PowerPoints. Never had anyone use a whiteboard. And I said, OK, well, you know what I'm doing then. Scrap the PowerPoint. I have it actually on my screen. I'm not, I'm not going to use it. Uh, we're going whiteboard here. We're going old school. And I think you'll see why in a second. So welcome, everyone. I want to start off with a question to you. And I want to ask you on a scale of 1 to 10. And put this in the chat for me. Because today you're going to work, all right? This is a workshop, meaning you're not sitting back. This isn't listen to Trav time. This is workshop. So be with me today. Okay. Can you promise me that? If you can put a one in the chat box, if you're like, all right, I'm ready to go. We got 52 minutes. Erica told me I had to end on the hour. So if you're ready to work and get some stuff done in 52 minutes, I'm here for you. All right, cool. Lots of ones. Monique, Samia, Veronica, Kristen, Deshaun. All right. So first thing you have to do for work here, zero to 10, where on this scale, if you're rating yourself, how do you feel about your current work situation? Okay, your job, just the whole situation around what you do for money and what your work is like. Just throw that in the chat box for me, zero to 10. There's no right answer. There's no wrong answer. All right, we got some zeros. We got a six. All right, we got a hundred million from Christine. (laughs) Nice, nice, nice. All right, cool. So we're going to talk about this in a little bit because my story starts I was standing there on a on a dock in rural Vermont, okay, and it was August, and I was a high school teacher, and I was standing there, and it was August, and life was good. I had the summer off. There was no cell service, or so I thought, and then my phone rang, and I picked it up. I'm like, I don't know this number. All right, well, maybe someone's trying to, you know, obviously someone's trying to get a hold of me. Let me pick it up, and on the other line was a lady, and we're going to call her Lisa T, because that's her name. Um, And this job that I had been working towards for four years as a teacher, she said, hey, Trav, um, yeah, this job that we kind of promised you when you left here uh, in June, well, we hired someone else for that. And uh, in that moment, I was I was pissed. I was I was upset. I was like, what is happening? My earth was like shattered because that was my identity. So the only thing I could do as I'm standing on this dock is like, I put my phone down. I wasn't so mad that I threw it in the water because, you know, I was a little frugal here. You guys are all frugal travelers. I jumped into the water. And as I started coming out of that water, a feeling of relief actually started flowing from me. And I'm like, this is weird. But unbeknownst to Lisa T, she had given me an opportunity. And that opportunity was to break free from what my life had been and to become an entrepreneur. Now, there was a major problem with me becoming an entrepreneur. I didn't know how to become an entrepreneur. I didn't think I had any skills to make money. I didn't know where to start or or how to even start trying to become an entrepreneur. And I felt alone because I didn't know anyone else in my life who was doing this. So in short, I had no plan. And because I had no plan, I started bouncing around to every single shiny object that there was. 
And this led me down a path where I was selling vacuum cleaners door to door, excuse me, uh, cleaning systems door to door. And let me tell you, that really sucked. Okay, come on, but I'm ching like, okay, I get it. All right. Not you're not here for the comedy. But I decided that there had to be a better way to go about this. And so I went on this journey. And I started a podcast. And this was way back in 2000. And, uh, and, and 12, I started a podcast speaking to other people about what they were doing and how they were able to live this lifestyle. And I wrote down my own dream business and what my lifestyle looked like. And I went out to go to learn how to do it and create something that was going to work for me. And I made a lot of costly and painful mistakes, but slowly I honed in on this system. And three years later, I remember this just like it was yesterday. I was walking down the street it was a Tuesday. Actually, this is crazy. It was a Tuesday at 1 p.m. So right now I'm doing this presentation where I am. It's Tuesday at 12, 11 p.m. So like we're right there. I was walking down a street in my hometown and there was a distillery on my left and there was a laundromat on my right. I'm just walking down the street and I just had this epiphany and I realized that the skills that I now had made me more money than my teaching job ever had. I realized that I had this podcast that had over 4 million downloads. And more importantly, what it allowed me to do was make connections with other amazing entrepreneurs and travelers from all over the world that, that I could take that phone out that Lisa T had called me on. And I could call these people who are like New York Times bestselling authors and people doing seven and eight figures and inspiring entrepreneurs. And I now was part of a group of that. And I realized that I had the system that, can, that I was continually able to, to make money, even if I was only working two, three, four days a week, and I wasn't tied to this 40, 45 hour, 50 hour work week. And when I had that epiphany, I thought, wow, like I, I've made it. And it wasn't when I was out scuba diving on the Great Barrier Reef or doing something exotic. It was when I was in my hometown that I was like, this is what a dream lifestyle looks like for me. And I believe that every single person here can create a business that allows them to quit their job and create the lifestyle that they truly want to live. And that's why I've set out on a mission. And my BHAG, if you're unfamiliar with the term BHAG, that's Big, Hairy, Audacious Goal. I've come up with a mission to help 16,440 people because that is the population of my hometown, the same one I was walking down the street on, quit their nine to fives and create a location independent lifestyle. So what I want you to do now, remember this is the workshop part. I need interaction from all of you. Even if you're not on camera, most of you aren't. So turn those cameras on, let's see you. All right, I want you to write out what does your dream lifestyle look like? And I want you to be hyper specific. So what hours would you work? Where would you live or where would you travel to? What type of work would you be doing? How would you spend your free time? I want to see this in the chat because everyone's dream lifestyle is different. It's not a one size fits all. And that's good, right? We all have different things we want to achieve. So as I go back up here and as you're doing that, I'm seeing some numbers here. All right. Take two explorers. Noel, nine. Fran was at a six. Uh, Jubili was at a seven. Dan, if I mispronounce your name, I'm sorry. Dan is at a seven. Samia's at a one, Rebecca's at a six, Derek's at a 10, Sandra's at a nine, Jason's at an eight, a five, a six, six, five, four. Okay, so what I'm seeing is like a lot of people, some of you are down here and that's okay. You're like, get me out, this really sucks. Some of you are in this range. We're in like that five to seven range, okay? And that's great. When I, If you would have asked me this question and no one did when I was a teacher because I had no Travis here to tell me that there was a way to create a location independent lifestyle. But if you would have asked me this, I would have been right here. I would have been at like a six and a half as a teacher. So if you're sitting there and you're saying, okay, I'm a six, I'm a five, I'm a seven. That doesn't mean you have to hate your job to want something better. My whole goal for every one of you by the end of this workshop is that you take whatever number you're at and you see what the path is going to be to jump one or two numbers up, right? If you're at a seven, how do you get to a nine or a 10? If you're at a five, how do you get to a seven? If you're at a zero or one, how do you get to a two or three or four? Because if you can take your lifestyle and you can start jumping up numbers, you can keep doing that. So if you had a one, that doesn't mean you'll never get to a 10. It means, all right, a one to a 10 is going to be really hard. Let's get you to three or four. All right. So let's see, what do we got in here? Dream lifestyles, 25 hours of work. Oh, every the first three things I saw said 25 hours of work. Okay. Uh, Veronica says 20 hours of work. All right. Um, okay. Love to work one to five. This is really important too. be aware of when you want to work me. I love working like nine to one, nine to two. 
After that, I'm like, I just want to chill. But I love working those hours. That's super important. Guess what I didn't get to do as a teacher? I didn't get to wake up at nine o'clock and start working. I was waking up at 6.30, putting on a shirt and tie and like being pissed at my alarm clock every single day. Okay, so that's what we want to get. We want you to be able to have the freedom. And so over the next 30 minutes, you're going to learn how you can take these steps towards creating a lifestyle that you want to lead. And here's what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to tell you what business to start. I don't know what business you should start. We just met most of us. Even people I know like Erica and Christine, like I'm not going to tell you what business to start. You're going to be able to figure that out based on the things that you're learning today. Because this is where everything we teach is drastically different from everyone else out there. They all want to say, hey, here's Forbes.com list of 45 best online businesses to start today if you want to leave your job. What does that mean? Someone gives you 45 options. How are you going to pick the one that's best for you? You've got to figure out what the best one is. So I'm not going to give you, I'm not going to tell you you should start running Amazon ads, or you should be a TikTok influencer, or you should do social media marketing, or you should be a freelance writer. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm going to tell you the things that you need to do, no matter what position or what career or what job you want to get into or what field. And how we differ from what everyone else teaches is everyone else teaches you how to build a business. So they say, okay, here's the business right? They're like, hey, we're going to teach you how to build an online business. How many of you just put a me in the chat box? If you've, if you've either bought in courses or listened to podcasts or, you know, read blogs of people teaching you to build an online business. All right. We got a lot of me's coming in. So listen, there's a lot of people really good at teaching you how to build an online business. There's fabulous people to teach you how to build an online business. And that's great. But here's where it fails. They teach you how to build a business. And then they say, or they don't even say it. They're like, Hey, and let's figure out how you can then fit your lifestyle around the business, right? The business is the important thing. Then, hey, you know, by the way, let's say, okay, well, you need to have this thing called a lifestyle, right? You need to have fun. You want to travel. Well, all right, let's, I don't know, figure it out, right? No, what we're telling you is we're going to teach you. I don't know, can you see that? Yeah, okay. We're going to teach you to figure out what the lifestyle that you want to have is, and then how to build the business around that. It's a huge distinction. You're prioritizing your lifestyle and then figuring out the business that works for you, not figuring out the business and then trying to figure out how the lifestyle works. Okay? So that's what we're talking about today. And that's where everyone else's system breaks down. They teach you how to build a business but we teach you how to build a lifestyle. And so one of the first conferences I was ever at, I was at when I, when I became an entrepreneur, right? Like, I don't know, there's that, it's a very hard, hard line. I mean, I guess I technically became an entrepreneur when I basically quit that teaching job. Uh, but, you know, I, did I consider myself that? I don't know, I'm at, I'm at this conference and a friend of mine says, hey, Trav, isn't it crazy? Entrepreneurs are the only people who will work 80 hours a week to escape a 40 hour a week job. That's what he said to me. And I still get chills every time I, I read this. He said, entrepreneurs are the only people who will work 80 hours a week to escape a 40 hour a week job. And when he said that to me, I was like, uh oh, I think I got into the wrong thing. <laughs> like, I don't wanna work 80 hours a week. I didn't see anyone and if I missed you, let me know. But I'm looking at the chat now. I did not see a single person put in that they wanted to work 80 hours a week. I saw a lot of people say they wanted to work 25 hours a week. They wanted to spend uh, work less, commute less, spend time with their family. Uh, er all right, Eric is saying 25 tops, right? I didn't see anyone saying, I want to work 80 hours a week. You all were saying, I want to work less. I want to spend more time with my family. I want to travel. I want to do the things that I love. And so the first thing I want you to realize is that you need to start prioritizing happiness. And I made that line way too short. Happiness over hustle. We are in a hustle culture and there is not a word that I hate more than when people start talking about hustling. They start telling you you have to be on your grind and you have to hashtag hustle and you have to work 80 hours a week and you have to be your ultra productive self. And I'm telling you, you need to figure out what gets you happiness over figuring out how to hustle. I am not telling you that you won't work hard. I'm not telling you that you're going to get stuff handed to you. 
But I'm telling you that if you start with this, you're not going to get the lifestyle that you want. And so the first key is to embrace unproductivity. Okay, so if you're taking notes, you can say like key number one, embrace unproductivity. And so you're like, what? Has anyone ever heard this before? Has anyone ever been told they should embrace being unproductive? Throw a me in the chat box. Okay, Kristen says no. I mean, unless you've heard this presentation before, I, I, I've never, no one's told me this. But here's the key to embracing unproductivity is we're gonna have you do something with setting non-negotiable time. And non-negotiable time is a super easy concept. We'll call it NNT. So it's like the opposite of the, no, the nomadic network. So just flip that and say NNT, non-negotiable time, okay? If you set non-negotiable time, it's exactly what it sounds like, okay? Non-negotiable time is simply you setting a time side, saying, I am going to build my business. I'm going to work on my side hustle during this time, no matter what, outside of like being in the hospital or something like that. And if you do that, it does two really important things. One, it cures you of entrepreneur's guilt, okay? Put a one in the chat box if you've ever felt like this. All right, like you're during the day, you're trying to do some work and you don't feel that productive. And you're like, oh, okay, okay. Then you get to like 5 p.m., 6 p.m. And you're like, man, I really want to spend time with my family or I just want to like go chill out and go get drinks with friends or watch Netflix and this, that. Ah, but I should be working. Oh, I could be working. And like you go to your computer and you try to do something or you're on your phone trying to do work, even though it's super hard to do work on your phone. And basically you're feeling crazy guilty that you didn't get done what you wanted to do. So you, A, you're not enjoying yourself and B, you're actually not getting anything done. Okay, that's entrepreneur's guilt. We all go through it. And there's a really, really smart guy. I'm gonna see if you could see this. I told you I was not using a PowerPoint. So I actually had to print this out like five minutes before. Does anyone know who this guy is? If you do, you're winning a t-shirt from me. Other than you, Casey, you, no, not you. Does anyone know? If you did, this would be really crazy. But this guy is so cool that we actually put him on a shirt. Uh, actually, one of our students, when I did this presentation or a similar one, she thought this guy was so cool looking. She put him on a shirt and then put the glasses that I'm wearing on him. She's a logo designer. So we made shirts. This guy's name is Bertrand, Bertrand Russell. All right, He's a philosopher. And he says, the time you enjoy wasting is not wasted time. The time you enjoy wasting is not wasted time. You're all here because you want to build a lifestyle that you enjoy. And that doesn't start, quote unquote, when you become successful. That lifestyle that you want to enjoy that you put in the chat box, that starts now. It starts right now. And it starts by setting non-negotiable time. Okay, for some of you that are working full-time jobs, that's a couple hours a week to work on your side hustle. For me, when I was working a full-time job as a teacher in Japan, that was four hours a week, or excuse me, six hours a week. It was four to 7 p.m. on Tuesday nights, and it was four to 7 p.m. on Thursday nights. That was my non-negotiable time. Okay, it was six hours a week. That didn't mean I only ever worked six hours a week, but it meant no matter what, Tuesday and Thursday from four to 7 p.m., I was working. Does that mean I was always crazy productive during those hours? No, but what it meant was that I was consistent and I embraced non-negotiable time, which then allowed me, if it was outside of 4 to 7 p.m., to not feel guilty. Hey, it's Wednesday and that's not part of my non-negotiable time and my friends want to go get drinks. Yep, I can do it and I can enjoy myself because I've cured myself of that entrepreneur's guilt. The other thing non-negotiable time does is it, it allows you to be more efficient. So there's a uh, law out there. It's called Parkinson's law. And it says work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. What that means in really easy language is like, you will put off doing anything until you absolutely have to do it. When did I finish going, figuring out this presentation and knowing exactly what I was going to say? Ah, uh, well, I got on with Eric at 11.45 p.m. So I think this guy was printed out at like 11.42 p.m. Okay, right? There was a deadline and I worked right up to it. So you're going to put stuff off until you absolutely have to do it. One of our students that came to our program, Rob, he, he told me, he's like, hey, Trav, one of, his BHAG was that he wanted to write a book on family personal finance, okay? And I said, Rob, how long have you been trying to write this book? He's like, two years. And, and, and I was like, well, how much have you had done? He's like, zero words. 
like, okay, well, do you have problems with the content? Do you need to organize it? You know, what's the thing? He's like, no, I know everything that I want to say. I just haven't ever done it. Two years. So I said to Rob, okay, listen, you have to set non-negotiable time. Rob set three hours a week of non-negotiable time. Rob had five kids. He was working a 50 hour a week job. So he didn't have a ton of time. He set three hours of non-negotiable time. And in two months, Rob finished his book, self-published his book, and was making sales of his book. He got more done, infinitely more done in two months than he had in two years prior because he set three hours of non-negotiable time a week, sat down and did it. So when you, I want you guys to, I told you this is a workshop, okay? This is a workshop. So right now, what I want you to do is I want to set I want you to set non-negotiable time. I'm looking at the chat box here. I want you to pick times in your week that are non-negotiable. Err on the side of picking less. If it's only two hours a week, that's fine. Don't tell me if you're a morning person that you're going to get up at 6 a.m. and do it. That's not going to work. Don't tell me you're doing it Friday at 5 p.m. Don't tell me you're going to spend all your weekends doing it. Pick times in your schedule that work and then don't deviate from, from it. So what is that non-negotiable time? Throw it in the chat box. Just give me your gut reaction. What makes sense for you? For me, it was Tuesday and Thursday, 4 to 7 p.m. Because when implemented correctly, non-negotiable time can be the most important thing you do when building out this lifestyle component of your dream. Because a lot of you are going to have to build a business that allows you to have your dream lifestyle. And if you don't put the time in, it won't happen. It allows you to get stuff done and embrace unproductivity. If it's outside of your non-negotiable time, go have five margaritas. Who cares? Enjoy life, right? So set your non-negotiable time. And I see, all right, Casey, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10 to 12. Okay, Tuesday, 5 to 8, says Erica. 8 to 11 p.m. Tuesday and Thursday, says Kristen. All right, you better be a night person. Like, make sure you're a night person because those hours get late. Everyone's different. Diane, Tuesday, Thursday, 5 to 7.30. Monique, Tuesday, Thursday, 4 to 6 p.m. Very similar to what I had. All right, cool, cool. Here's the key number two. All right, so embrace on productivity, number one. Key number two, I'm coming back to the t-shirt, guys. I One day I'll make a t-shirt with all three keys on it. But for right now, I don't know if you can see what it says here. All right. But key number two is to say F perfection. All right. So you can be as vulgar as you want with this. I have kids in the other room. So I'm just going to say F perfection. But the second thing that we're talking about today is perfection. Because five years ago, I was doing a workshop very similar to this. And I was standing not in this exact spot because I've, I've actually moved uh, to the beach because that's my dream lifestyle. All right, this might mess things up, but really quickly, if you can see out there, let me move my mic. I don't know if you can, but the ocean is right there, okay? So for me, that is my dream lifestyle. So I moved to the beach because that to me was my dream lifestyle. So I was doing this workshop a couple of years ago and I was sitting there and I, I asked this question. I said, what is the biggest thing that's stopping you from getting to your dream lifestyle? And this person said, perfectionism is the roadblock that stops me dead in my tracks. Perfectionism is the roadblock that stops me dead in my tracks. And when she said that, not kidding, like every time I say it, the chill still goes up my spine because that hit home and so hard to me that I, I mean, I remember it five years later. I don't remember who said it. I wish I did, but that is so true. How many of you, Jason, put a truth in there? Yeah, just put a, put an amen in the chat box if this is you. Put an amen in there if you're like, oh my gosh, amen, Travis Preach, brother. Perfectionism is a roadblock that stops me dead in my tracks. Who knows? This is a little easier of a person. You might know this person. Who knows this person? A little more current, not like from the 1800s. All right, who is it? I see, who, who's got their hand up there? All right, I see Diane putting her hand up. Yes, this is Brene Brown. Very famous, very awesome. I've got to hear her speak. Erica, I think you probably got to hear her speak or been around. She's incredible. The way she puts it is this, and I love this, the, this analogy. So like picture this in your mind. Perfectionism is the 20 pound shield we lug around thinking it will protect us. When it's, the really, when it's really the thing preventing us from taking flight. Mm. Like, 
a 20 pound shield. We hide behind it and we think, yeah, we're good. If we never step out from behind this shield, like no one will ever know, we're never gonna get hurt and we're never gonna be able to take flight ever. Perfectionism is a 20 pound shield we lug around thinking it will protect us when it's, the really, when it's really the thing preventing us from taking flight. That's Brene Brown. Listen, no business is perfect. No business person is perfect. And if you can't be perfect, what do you have to do? You have to say this. Everyone needs to say this. They need to say F perfection. Hey, listen, you're not gonna be perfect. Sandra, you're not gonna be perfect. Casey, you're not gonna be perfect. Both Casey's, you're not gonna be perfect. Um, Samir, you're not gonna be perfect. Christine, you're not gonna be perfect. Marvin, Kristen, Taylor, Julia, Hollis, who else I got? Kristen, Erica, Dan, Heather, Rebecca, guys, I'm sorry to be the ones to burst your bubble, but you're not going to be perfect. And you know what's going to happen if you don't try to be perfect, that then is a weight off your shoulders. Like, don't use that as a negative. Say, oh my gosh, that is freeing. I don't have to be perfect. Whew. I want to play a little game with you guys. You guys have all earned it. All right. First person to put this in the chat wins a prize. I've got t-shirts like this I can give out. Erica, if you guys have uh, prizes from the Nomadic Network. All right, she's shaking her head, yes. So we'll get you a prize. I, I'm gonna read out a timeline and I want you to tell me who is this person, okay? So first person we see in the chat box that gets this right. In 1995, they unsuccessfully applied for a job at Netscape, yes, that old internet browser, okay? In 1996, they were ousted as CEO from their company. In 1999, their company was voted as one of the 10 worst businesses. All right, Hollis has got it. Yes, Elon Musk. I'll finish this out real quick. 1999, company was voted as one of the 10 worst businesses in the world. 2000, ousted as CEO of another company while on his honeymoon. Here's where you might start to really understand it. 2006, launched a rocket, it exploded. 2007, second rocket launch, exploded. 2008, third rocket launch, exploded. 2015, fourth rocket launch, exploded. 2016, fifth rocket launch, guess what happened? Exploded. Today, however many billions of dollars Elon Musk is now worth, right? That's a lot of failure. You're being told you have the, one of the 10 worst companies in the world. You're getting on your honeymoon. You're getting kicked out as the, as the CEO of your company. You're having very public failures, right? But Elon Musk just continues to say, F perfection. I am going to do things that are bigger and better than most people even dream of because I'm saying F perfection. One of the people who came through our program, Jen, uh, she told me she wanted to do podcast production, right? So she was like, all right, I want to leave my job. I really love podcasts. I want to be do podcast pre-production and podcast post-production. So basically a host has a show. She helps get them guests. She helps make notes. And then she helps edit it. And I was like, okay, Jen, this is great. And so we did a little thing called uh, the big levers technique. And I had to reach out to some people. And I got this, we, we did coaching calls once a week. And so in between the coaching calls, we did the coaching calls on Tuesday. It was like a Thursday. I get this like panic text from Jen. She's like, call me. I'm like, okay, what's going on? And I call and she's like, Trav, some, something happened. I'm like, okay, what's the matter? She's like, I, I landed a client. And I'm like, okay, Jen, this is happening. She's like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know like how much to charge them. I don't know what to tell them to do. You just told me to out reach out. I don't have a website. I don't have a, I don't have a formulated business plan. I don't have packages put in place. And I was like, Jen, all of that can be figured out. You just landed a client, okay? Jen said F perfection. She was really scared to do it. She didn't want her outreach. She was the one who was vehemently opposed to, to doing this before she was ready. I made her do it. She landed a client. That was the first client. She still works with that client today. So every day that you don't take action because you're worried about being perfect, is a day that you're continuing to lead the same life that you're living right now. Every day you don't take action is a day that you're having to work at a job that you don't love. Some of you are at zeros and ones. Some of you are at six and sevens. Every day you don't take action, you're doing that job that isn't a nine, that isn't a 10, that isn't a hundred million thousand, like whatever uh, Christine's number was. And every day you don't take action is a day where you aren't, weren't, aren't having the impact that you were born to have and living the life that you should have. So here's one specific thing you can do right now to improve. I want your gut reaction in here, okay? So this is the first thing that comes to your head when I answer this, ask you this question, okay? Cool? We've got some trust here. 
first thing that comes to your head. What is one thing you've been putting off that you can say F perfection to right now? I want to see that in the chat. What came to your head? The one thing you've been putting off. Writing a play. Writing, says Sandra. Writing a play. A lot of writing. Facebook ads, says Casey. SEO freelance, says Fran. Samia, sharing my work. Okay. Biokinetics, says Monique. All right. Getting another job, Janet. Uh, starting photography. Finish a writing piece. Blogging, says Jason. Website update. Starting a mastermind, says Erica. Okay, we'll hold you to that. Sharing my artwork and portfolio. Moving to another state says Miotosis. Okay. Making offers, says Diane. All right. You all know what it is for you. What's the one thing that you can say F perfection to? Okay. You've said it. Let, I, I want you to say it. You can say it out. If you can say it out loud, great. If you can't, type it in the box on three. I want us all to say F perfection. Okay. If you can say it out loud, say it out loud. If not, type it in the chat box. This is going to be a weight off your shoulders. Okay, guys. Ready? One, two, three. Three. All right. All right. We got him coming in fast and furious. Yeah. F perfection. And say it again and again and again and again and again. Listen, this presentation has not been perfect. I've stumbled over my words a few times. I almost just stumbled over it right there as I was saying it. It's not perfect. It doesn't matter. Hopefully you're here getting a lot of knowledge and wisdom and, and you're going to be taking steps forward. If I said, oh, I got to wait till this is perfect, we never put this on. Erica never would have nomadic network events ever, ever if they had to be perfect. You, you would never get on another Zoom call with her again, ever. You have to say F perfection. Okay, the third thing, third key here, guys, that I want to talk to you about is called the too much coffee technique. So I need to make a shirt where this guy has a pipe and a cup of coffee, and then we've got all three on the shirt. And the reason we're talking about this is because when we start talking about building a business, hands down, the most common thing I hear, and actually, I want to see if you guys put this in the chat. What is the biggest obstacle that you have right now to, to, to building a side hustle or business? What's the biggest obstacle? I want to see what you put in here as well. Okay, myself. All right. Fear. Funding. All right. Keep going. Procrastination. Yep. What we hear from most people and all of this, and fear is tied up in this. This is where the fear component comes in. People say, I don't know where to start. Fear happens because we're unsure what to do. We don't know where to start. So we're fearful because remember, we're afraid of not being perfect. So we're like, oh my gosh, put that shield up. Oh, I don't know where to start. And so the too much coffee technique does two things. One, it helps you get unstuck and out of your own head. And number two, do I have a green marker? I don't, dang it. All right, you just have to imagine. It helps you make money. Woo, okay, spoiler alert. If you wanna build a business and you want your dream lifestyle, you need to have money, okay? I told you we we're gonna help you build a lifestyle, but that lifestyle doesn't exist without money for any single one of you, okay? So give me a heck yeah in the chat box if the too much, if you're like, hey, I could, I'm, I'm cool with getting unstuck and making money. Like, yeah, is that cool? I mean, if not, I'll just, I'll just stop right now. I know what it is. I don't have to, I don't have to say it. All right. We got some heck yes. All right. And the reason you don't know where to start is because you're thinking about it wrong, but here's the best thing. One little tweak and it'll shift your whole mindset and your whole business. Okay. So in the chat box here, this is going to be a fun one. I want you to put in here in the chat box for me. What's the last thing you bought that you were excited to buy? What was the last thing you bought that you're excited to buy? What was it? Hiking shoes, flights, woo, Alex, swimsuit, plane ticket. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I should have guessed that there'd be a lot of travel coming in here. Design course, violin, a new bike helmet, paddleboard, plane tickets, art equipment, surfboard, says Julia. Nice. Earbuds, says Gail. Stuff to fix my house up, says Desiree. My SUV. Okay. I told Erica right before this. 30 minutes before I got on here, right before I was printing out these pictures, I went and bought a golf cart. I live on an island. I, I, it's coming up to summer. We don't want to get in the car. I went and bought a golf cart. Okay. I'm crazy excited. I can't wait to go pick my kids up at school in like 30 minutes in the golf cart because they're going to be screaming their head off because they've wanted a golf cart for a year and a half since we moved here because all the kids, cool kids ride around in golf carts. Okay. Super excited to buy that. So keep this in your head as we go through here of the thing that you're excited to buy. Here's what people do that, that are stuck, okay? And people who are afraid to build their businesses and have fear. 
Okay, they guess at what people want. Okay, they take a guess at what people want. All right, they're like, hmm, what do what does someone want? Well, I think they want a course on this, or I think they need help with this. So they take a guess at what people want. And then if they get past the fear, because some people get past the fear, all right, they then create based on that guess. Okay. Okay. So some people get stuck here, right? Just say me, if, you, if you're here, if you're like, well, I haven't even created anything for my side hustle, really. I'm like, I just think about it. I'm in the analysis, uh, analysis paralysis mode. Just put a me in the chat box if you're here. All right. So a lot of people get stuck here because they know it's a guess. They're like, well, I don't know if this will work. That makes sense. If you don't know it'll work, you don't want to put time and effort and money and, and, and blood, sweat and tears into something because it's just a guess. But some people get past that and they create based on that guess. And then when it comes down to are people going to pay them for it? Well, that is anyone's guess. I don't know. It's just a guess. You started with a guess. You created based on a guess. And it's just a guess of whether it's going to work or not. But there's a better way to do this, a much better way to do this. Here's what you want to do. Instead of guessing what people want, ask what problem they have. All right, so you want to ask what problem they have. So for some people, and I forget who put this in, I think Desiree said she bought stuff to fix her house. I don't know what that is. Uh, Desiree, put in the chat box, what was it that you bought? Was it paint? Was it roofing shingles? Was it was it uh, new boards for your deck? Whatever it is, right? But they ask, you ask what problem people have. All right, what problem do you have, right? Someone, I think it was Dan, I could be wrong, said they, or Jason bought hiking shoes. Okay, Jason's problem was like, I'm going hiking and these sneakers I have are not good enough for hiking. So my problem is I need better shoes for hiking. Hmm, what do I do? I go get hiking shoes. All right, Desiree was organizers for her kitchen. Okay, so the problem she had was like, my kitchen's not organized. All right, I can't keep it clean. So I'm hoping organization helps. Cool, that's the problem she has. So you ask what problem people have, then you listen, and this is very important because some people are good at asking, but then they just fail to listen. So they ask and don't listen. You listen to what those people say. Then you create based on what they want. Okay, you create every good company in the world does this. Any product that you put in there does this. They solve a problem that you have. Desiree's was organizers. I think it was Jason was hiking shoes. So someone wanted, Julia wanted a surfboard, right? Her problem was I need a different surfboard. Maybe you've gotten better and you need a more advanced surfboard. Maybe you need a shorter board. Maybe you need a longer board because the waves are small. Right now the waves are too super tiny out there. So I'm gonna have to take out my long board, okay? So you listen to what they say, you create. And now will people pay you money for this? I want... Julia, did you pay money for your surfboard? Desiree, did you pay money for your organizers? Jason, did you pay money for your hiking boots? Rebecca, did you pay money for your SUV? Sandra, did you pay money for your new skis? Uh, Gail, did you pay money for your new earbuds? Uh, Samia, did you pay money for your art equipment? All of you paid money for plane tickets. You probably are following what Nomadic Matt teaches and Erica teach. So you probably paid less, but you still probably paid. Uh, Hollis, did you pay money for a new bike helmet? Kristen, did you pay for a design course? Sandra, a violin, you get it, right? Like, yes, you paid because someone asked what problem you have, they listened, they created, and then they made money. That's what a business is. This is a business. It doesn't have to be a 10 page, 15 page, 40 page business plan. I told you about Jen, right? Jen asked what problem podcasters had. She listened. She, she got on calls with people, they hired her, and then she, she kind of went backwards and said, okay, and that's called pre-selling, that's another thing for another day, but you get paid, and then you go and create it. That's even sometimes better. You say, I'm not even going to waste time creating until I know someone will pay me for this. I did that as an oopsie with my very first course. I didn't even know I was pre-selling. I just basically put it out there. People said they wanted it, and I'm like, oh, I got three days because I said it was launched in three days. I better figure this out. Um, most people think, what do I want to create? But it's not what do you want. It's about what others want. You don't create a business or a product or a service. 
you solve a problem. You don't create a business, a product or a service. You solve this. You solve a problem for someone else. And no matter how far you are on your entrepreneurial journey, you are guilty of this from time to time. Someone we work with, Shannon, uh, I'm just going to read this out because she was one of our first students and she was coming in and she had all these business plans. And, and then she sent me this on Facebook. She says, thanks, Trav. I just got my first client, my sister. Um, she actually helped me realize what I wasn't seeing and that people like her know what they want, but can't visualize it in 3D. So I think I'm going to focus more on 3D floor plans and have elevations for clients so they can visualize it. She was an interior designer. She was telling me all these ideas she had. And I said, ask people what they need. And she's like, oh, my sister told me she needed this. I said, can you do that? She's like, yep. First client, just like that. The too much coffee technique is the very first step in turning the faucet on for a successful business. Because when you can start to make money, this can lead you to the ultimate goal, quitting your nine to five and living the dream lifestyle that all of you put in the chat box 40 minutes ago, right? This, get money in the door as a side hustle or whatever to begin with, build it up, leave your job, have more freedom. It's not rocket science, but you have to do the things that we talked about. You have to say F perfection. You have to solve a problem that people have. You have to put the time aside with non-negotiable time. If you don't do those three things, again, whether you're doing Facebook ads, whether you're freelance writing, whether you're a photographer, whether you do drone stuff like Christine, crazy awesome drone stuff, doesn't matter. None of that will work unless you do non-negotiable time. And I'll put it up here, right? You say F perfection and you solve a problem. If you do that, any business that you guys start will work because you are already solving that problem. So I want you to throw this in the chat box for me. When would you ideally like to be able to quit your nine to five, like have an amount of income from a side business that you start that you could sustain full time? Like, what is it for you? Where are we at? It doesn't have to be tomorrow, but when would you want to? Okay, Erica, by baby number two. Okay, Desiree, six months. Okay, put that in. All right, Sam, today. Okay, well, Sam, you got some work to get going, but here's the thing. Like just because you want it today and it might not happen today doesn't mean that you shouldn't start today. I was living in Japan, working full-time as a teacher. Okay, I had a full-time job. It took me eight months of working full-time to, to, and, and doing my business to get to a point where I felt comfortable leaving it. Eight months, maybe that's quick for some of you. Maybe it's not quick enough. Monique says two months when I'm debt-free. Fran, I haven't started yet, but let's say two years. End of the year. Okay, all right everyone's number is different of when they'd like to quit their nine to five. That's fine. In fact, the average out of the thousands of people we've worked with when we've done this, that the typical average is one and a half years. That's the average people being like, okay, because here's the, here's the key. And then I want to get to, I want to get to your questions. If I told you, even all of you who are zero at your job, right? So whether you're a zero or one, and if you're a zero or one, put that in the chat and let me know again, who, who was like really low on their job satisfaction scale. But if I told you, hey, listen, you only have a year and a half more and then you're free. Would you be able to stick it out? Like, would you be able to say, okay, this really stinks, but it's a year and a half. And at the end of the year and a half, I now have the lifestyle that I want, right? If you're six, seven, five, six, seven, you're like, okay, this isn't so bad, right? The reason it feels so overwhelming and the reason it's a zero and a one and a two is because there's no light at the end of the tunnel. But when you start doing this, there is a light because you're working towards something else. You're not, you know, the reason that Lisa T for me, there's such relief after basically she said, hey, we're not going to give you that job. And I was like, okay, F you, I quit, right? Then the reason I felt such relief is because I was three years into a 30 year teaching career. I didn't realize it because I was in it, but there was no way I was making it 30 years. And so all of a sudden, there's this light at the end of the tunnel. And so I just want you guys to realize that like it doesn't have to happen overnight. And honestly, it won't happen overnight. 
It's not like I'm here to tell you, I'm here to burst every bubble possible and make this as realistic as possible. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to be super easy. You're not going to make a million dollars in seven days, despite what all the Instagram and Facebook ads show you. Every day is not swimming with dolphins, followed by Mai Tais on the beach. Okay. But your day to day lifestyle can be one where you work 20 to 25 hours a week where you get to pick your kids up at school in a golf cart, where you live at the beach, you know, where you're not putting on a shirt and tie or professional clothing or answering a bell to a bell or anything like that. And so the last thing I just want to ask you guys is if you're not going to take the step forward into this new lifestyle now and building it, then when? Like, if not now, then when? Because my goal for every single one of you is that you look back on this session. You say, wow, all right, Trav, that was 40. Erica gave me, she talked for eight. Okay, she gave me 42 minutes. I talked for 42 minutes. My goal is that you look back and you say, for those 42 minutes, I took what you said. I determined my non-negotiable time and I wrote it down, right? I realized I have to say F perfection 10, 12, 17, 100 times a day. Some days are better than others, okay? And you started using the too much coffee technique of asking what problem they have. And we call it the too much coffee technique because have you ever met people when they drink too much coffee? Uh, they, I, I don't drink coffee, so if I did, it'd be even crazier. But they just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. That's what you want them to do. Hey, what's your number one struggle when it comes to blank? And they just talk and talk and talk. And you just say, oh, check. Oh, there's a problem that you have. Oh, check. Okay, Desiree needs organizers. All right, why does she need organizers? Oh, her kitchen's not clean. Okay, her kids never put away the uh, the cereal. Okay, check, check. Okay, you just start hearing all these problems. And then you say, hmm, can I solve them? Yeah, I can. And there's your business. All right, Erica, we back. Questions, comments, thoughts. I know I left a lot. I gave a lot to you, but just remember these three things. Start building on them and you'll be there. We're actually not going to do questions because the chat was popping off, but there were no questions that came up because you had us so engaged and enthralled that we're just going to skip the questions for now. I would love for Casey on your team to just drop in the chat, like a, some way to get in touch with Travis, whether it's his Instagram or email or something like that. So if you do have questions, you can ask Travis, but Travis, I just want, like, everyone is so inspired right now. Obviously, you've just, like, flipped what every business Instagram account, every business, like, YouTube on its head and, like, switch, flip the switch for us. And I'm sure everyone's just thinking, like, oh, my God, who can I talk to to see what they want, to see what problem that I could solve for them, to see what I could create for them. And, like, you have people just dreaming up with this light at the end of the tunnel approach. And I love it. And also, I just want to acknowledge this is a huge week for you because you actually created a really cool opportunity for people. And this is like how you get to live the lifestyle that you love. And this, <laughs> it's really funny because you get to live the lifestyle that you love teaching people how to live the lifestyle that they love. So I would just love for you to just share a bit more about the paradise pack and what that is so that people are clear about that. You have like three minutes. All right, for sure. Yeah. Thank you. And guys, thank you for the love in the, in the, in the chat box. If you can do me one favor, it would be to take what you learned here and, and whatever it means to you, take it and, and run with it, okay? Like that's the best thing you could do. Remember my goal is to help 16,440 people build that dream lifestyle. I want every single one of you to be one of them. So that's, if you're like, that was great, cool. Take it and run with it. One of the easiest ways to do that, and this is why we created the Paradise Pack. We asked people what their issues were and they said, I don't know where to start. And we said, okay. Some of them said, you know, all this coaching and stuff that you do, it's like too expensive. Okay fine. What were the obstacles? And so what we decided to do is bundle up the, the best possible courses out there on how to build online lifestyle remote businesses and on how to travel cheaper, bundle them together seven days only, because I, I as much as I like to think that I'm charming with friends, uh, you know, it's $6,128 of courses and products. Erica has a product in there. There's other names in the travel space that you will recognize if you go to that page. Okay. And it, and we sell for $197. So it's like 96.5% off. All right. And so our goal with the paradise pack is 
listen, we can't answer every question for you. I can't teach you everything. I cannot teach you how to fly a drone. I've flown a drone once, I crashed it, I stopped. Guess who can? Christine, who's here. Guess what course she has in the Paradise Pack? How to fly a drone, right? And so I said, listen, there's a few things I'm good at teaching. And there's a lot that I know nothing about. But if someone's interested in that, can I find the world's best expert at that? And so we've searched high and low. We've made a ton of connections over eight years. We've taken their products. We've put them in a bundle. So when you get the Paradise Pack, you get all those courses um, in there and you can take them as they come. So maybe you're like, yeah, I want to learn the drone stuff first. And then I want to go and I want to figure out how to make passive income. Okay, go with Christine's course first, then go with Jonathan's. Maybe you're like, Hmm, I want to figure out what business plan works best for me. So you go take a net uh, um, course, um, basically worker to wanderer. And then you go back and say, now hey, I'm going to go on a trip. I want to learn a drone. And then you go to Christine's, right? So it really is choose your own adventure, but we give you everything we possibly can to help you build an online lifestyle business and how to travel cheaper. We take that, we bundle it together. It's gone in seven days. So Monday at 11.59 p.m. Eastern, it is gone. So please don't beg Erica, don't beg me. It's the worst part of everything we do. People always say, come on, please, please, please. I'm like, nope, sorry. So um, it's seven days. And the reason we do that is because it's, it's such a good value that it's like, I don't want to curse, but it's like, do this or get off the pot, right? And it's like, if you can't decide in seven days that this is for you, fine, go find something else. But it's a no brainer if you're like, I'm ready to take that leap into building that lifestyle business. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, I don't know who else is on this call, but Christine and I do have products in it this year. And while Christine's is really cool and sharing about drones, mine is like, once you build that lifestyle, that business lifestyle, you could go and find the man or woman of your dreams. So I have an online dating course in there that I'm really excited about, uh, <laughs> that you could do from anywhere in the world. Um, all right. So I'm there's just going to question. There's one question here, Erica, from Monique, Go ahead. and then she says, how many times a year does this happen? So just to be completely honest with you, we've only ever done it once a year. Uh, and actually we haven't done it since 2019. So we did it for six years, uh, 20, whatever that is, 2014 to 2019. We did six different paradise packs. Um, and I should tell you every single time it's different. Like there's, it's not the same pack. So next year, it's not necessarily going to be Christine's drone and Erica's course and my, this and my, that, like we, we change it up. So this pack as it is, will never happen again. Um, I don't, I cannot tell you honestly, if we're going to do it next year or not, we took a couple years off. We brought it back in 2022 again, honestly, because people were asking for it. We get emails every day. Hey, that thing you used to do the paradise pack, the bundle sale, like, are you ever doing it again? And we were like, uh, maybe we should listen. Remember that listen part. And, and so we brought it back. So I, I, I don't 